Welcome to another edition of Sprague Insanity. I want to kind of share with you what I'm going to be taking on my three-day, two-night backpacking trip, my first ever overnight stay in backpacking, and show you what I'm taking. And for the uh, professionals out there, the guys that do this a lot uh, right away, they're probably looking at it and laughing, going, boy, that is nowhere close to ultralight or light, and that is absolutely correct. This is what I would consider more of a regular uh, weight backpack. Uh, it is weighing in fully loaded with clothes, uh, two liters of water, three days worth of food at 35.6 pounds. Uh, the base weight without the food and water, but it does have the fuel in it for the uh, cook system, is a little over 27 pounds, 27.3. So as you can tell, the base weight is nowhere close to being even light, uh, which I tend to believe, I think they say is 20 pounds. Now, what you will find with this is I could get down to 20 pounds. Um, if I want to spend the extra money, I'm really concerned about carrying the extra weight. For example, I could swap out the um, tent, the shelter. I can get rid of my freestanding Big Agnes, Happy Hooligan, and replace it with a tent pole erected duplex uh, by z uh, You use your um, hiking poles and has to be staked out so it's not freestanding. That would save quite a bit of weight. Uh, they do have an option for poles to make it freestanding, but that would add back up to close to about two pounds. So let's assume without that, I can take off quite a few pounds there. The other thing that I can get rid of is some luxury items. Um, I have a chair. It's just a touch over one pound, the Helinux uh, Chair Zero. Uh, but that is truly luxury, so that could easily be gotten rid of and save a pound. Another item, which I probably don't need, will never use, have grandeur plans of bushwhacking or making my own camp wood, who knows, but it's a knife that weighs a little under a pound, and I could get rid of that, and that would save another pound. So in those areas alone, I could save quite a bit of weight, and that will get me down well under uh, the top weight that I would need for replacing this pack. And what I would probably replace this pack with then is a Z-Pax uh, Arcol, and that would save another several pounds. And I would be right at 20, 19.8, around that area for my base weight if I replace those items. So I could get down to the top end of what you would consider lightweight backpacking. But um, through doing exercise, going out on hiking trips with this fully packed, this feels comfortable for me. Now, at first, I was well over 39 pounds, probably 40 pounds. Uh, being out of shape, it just it pretty much liked to kill my legs. But after trimming down the weight as far as I have and being out and going walking, this thing feels really comfortable now, and my legs are getting in shape, and I don't feel the, the impact of this weight like I would. Now, would I try to take this on a 2,000-mile trip on a thru-hike? Probably not, but for a three-day trip where we're going to do probably a max of 24 to 25 miles, um, and maybe uh, eight miles at most per day, um, I feel comfortable that I'll be able to lick that. Um, right now, we're doing hikes of of four and a half, uh, 4.4 miles, and I'm able to hoof a pretty good uh, pace there, uh, doing about 3.7 to 3.8 miles an hour. So um, I feel comfortable, and this this pack is very, very comfortable. If you take a look at it, uh, all the weight sits on your hip. I've got it adjusted just perfectly. It doesn't pull down on the shoulders, and it just puts pressure on the front of the chest like it should, and it's pretty close to the back. I figured out how to pack it, so all the weight's closer to the back and center of gravity, so it's not a real issue for me. Um, I've also packed it so that I have the chair, the tent, the tent poles on the outside, on the bottom here, the uh, sleeping bag back here, and then all my clothes and everything on the inside. So that's how I have it packed. Um, when I'm hiking, I'm going to be wearing the uh, Solomon boots, and with the Solomon boots, I have my lucky trekking poles that I'll be taking with me, as well as my outfit. So it's going to be a really, really light pair of El Cheapo underwear I got at Walmart, a Columbia shirt that uh, rolls up and stows away the sleeves 
So when you get warm, I'm taking a long sleeve mainly for protection from the sun. Sunburn quite easily, and I really don't feel like lathering up with a suntan lotion necessarily. Um, and then the convertible pants by Columbia as well, that I can, if I get hot, I could zip these off and make them into shorts if I so desire. But I wanted to keep the long pants from protection, not only from the sun, but from bugs and uh, whatever we may be walking through. And then in addition, I've got the heavy wool socks, smart wool, and liners, which are silk liners to help prevent blisters. Uh, something I've learned through uh, carrying this weight and packing, I have this marvelous, marvelous little item here. It's a, it's a gel pad I purchased because this particular boot on this ankle, based on the way I walk, uh, puts a lot of pressure against the top, top area of the ankle here and bruises it. So I put this pad over it and it uh, alleviated that problem. I no longer have a problem with that. The only other problem I've had is a blister on the back of the heel, on the right foot. So I'll just use Luco tape and uh, do some preventative uh, taping before I go out. So I'm still trying to address that issue to make sure that that doesn't become a problem. So that's it. Um, so I'll unpack all this and show you exactly what it is I'm taking and what constitutes that 36 pounds. Well, now it looks like my bag has totally uh, blown up and everything's been, looks like it's just been scattered across the floor, which pretty much is what I did. This is what everything looks like when it's outside the bag. Looks like a lot of stuff done, and that's uh, it's pretty much what constitutes 36 pounds. Uh, first of all, I think I forgot to mention uh, what the bag is. The bag is an Atmos 65 AG, got it on sale. One of their uh, big sales at REI. Fantastic bag, like I mentioned earlier. Um, it, it just fits so well. I mean, the weight just lands on your hips where it should. And if you dial this thing in right, it can, it can handle quite a bit of weight. But what I have found is that the sweet spot seems to be 35 pounds or lower. Um, you get higher than that and, you know, you just start, at least for me, I start feeling the weight a little bit more. But uh, around 35 pounds or lower, this bag uh, feels quite good. So moving on from there, let's talk about the different systems I have going on here. First one is a sleep system. So I have the Feathered Friends Flicker 20, 20 degree uh, hybrid, I would call it, because it's, uh, you could use it like a regular sleeping bag where you cinch up the uh, footwell here and crawl in it like a regular, like mummy bag, except it does not have a hood. Or you can unzip the whole thing, uncinch this down here, and it turns into a quilt. So then you can use it like a quilt or a blanket. So in warmer weather, uh, you just lay it over the top of you. So I thought that was a nice compromise on having a warm sleeping bag slash going into maybe the hotter summer months, uh, warmer spring months, and just use it as a regular blanket. And then there's the stuff sack that it comes with. So I have not used this in the field. As you know, this, like I said, this is the first time I'll be going out on this backpacking trip. So we'll see how that uh, how that really works out. Packs down very small. Uh, again, it's Feathered Friends. If you want to go look it up yourself and see what uh, what it's all about, it's called the Flicker 20. Now, to complete the sleep system, I also have the Xped Sinmat HLMW, a medium wide pad. So it's a little bit wider, gives me more shoulder room. And it's, it comes with its own pump sack and repair kit. So I don't have to sit there and keep blowing into it. It comes with a, uh, you can use it as a stuff sack as well. And you just pump uh, pump the thing up using the stuff sack. It's very convenient and very quick to do so. Um, seems very comfortable. I've blown it up. I've laid on it. I've heard that if you lay, you sleep on your side, which I do, it's very comfortable and you don't have your hips or your shoulders beaten into the ground underneath. I believe this is rated an R3233 around that area. So it's a good three season uh, pad. Um, one thing is, is it does take a while to deflate, but uh, once you get used to how to do it, it's not really that bad to uh, bring down. The other thing I brought as uh, you can consider a luxury item is the pillow. If I could find it in my mess here, right here. So I've got the, Actually, I don't remember what it was. I got this on sale as well. It's the uh, Eros Pillow Premium Large, Sea to Summit. And again, you just blow it up 
and uh, very nice and comfortable. So it gives you a comfortable pillow. You can see how small it stacks down. And I just stuff it inside my coffee cup, which is what I'm going to use this for. Um, again, another luxury item if you listen to the ultra hikers out there. But I decided I wanted another cup to carry with me besides my cook kit system. So I, had, I could put coffee in it. And also it comes with a lid. So this comes with a plastic lid and I can keep the coffee warm. It's double-sided, this one is, and uh, made out of titanium, so it's a wee bit heavier, but uh, I figure I'll keep my coffee warm, and then if you know me, it's all about the coffee first, not the weight. Um, also in here, I put some uh, earplugs, just in case uh, noises at night bother me, I can uh, cork up my ears. So that's my sleep system. From a shelter system, system I have the Big Agnes uh, Happy Hooligan UL2. Um, not too bad. It's, uh, it's over three pounds, including the uh, stakes and the tent poles, but it is freestanding, which I wanted initially, so that being a rookie out there, if I hit someplace where it's very hard to drive stakes, um, I don't have to worry about finding boulders or anything else trying to stake out a, a non-freestanding tent, so I could set this up, and I'll probably do that. It's a follow-on video to show you what that looks like. So that's my uh, shelter. Next thing I want to talk about is the uh, water system. So I used to have a Nalgene bottle, but I wanted to start getting into ounce counting there. And one thing I did like about the Nalgene bottle is that it had uh, measurements on. So, uh, you know, multiple through hikers suggested um, save the weight and go with the El Cheapo smart water bottles. And that's what I did. So to carry water from stop to stop where you could find water and replenish, use smart water bottles, one liter size. And I went and bought the smaller um, ones where I could get, I think I got this off of another water bottle, but basically it's a nice spout. Click up, got the water. And you can also use this because of this way the spout is designed to put it on the end of a uh, Sawyer squeeze filter and back flush it if you need to. So I got that. And then I also took a permanent marker, which isn't so permanent because it's starting to wear off. I put markings on the side of this to measure out water in uh, both milliliters and ounces so I can make my coffee and my dehydrated, dehydrated mills a little bit more accurately than just guessing in the big pot. So that's what I did. And I've got two of these. I've got that one and this one. So I can carry two liters with me on my side pockets. They're easy to get to. Um, I haven't had a problem. That's why this one comes with a clip in case I wanted to put it on the hip belt, but I don't think I really need it. Um, I'm able to reach it, put it in the side pocket, take it out fairly easy. So those are the smart water bottles to carry water. So you may be asking, okay, uh, you run out of water. Uh, how do you replenish? Well, there's, there's water stops that you can replenish. And for replenishing water, I went ahead and got the Sawyer Squeeze filter and kit. And Sawyer Squeeze... Um, somebody suggested what I thought was a good idea to put it in its own Ziploc bag. Why? Because it's going to hold water after you use it. It's going to drain out. And you want to worry about cross-contamination. You don't want this dirty water coming from whatever source it is to spill over anything else. So make sure to keep the cap on the end and let the water run out in this bag. Who cares? Um, so that's why I keep it in a separate bag. With the Sawyer Squeeze came, uh, came a few items in the kit. It came with... Two of these 64 ounce bladders and 16 ounce bladder. And so here's what I plan on doing. I plan on, um, I hear that these, these things are hard to fill up. If you look at the end of this thing, you can imagine if you had a really low water source and you're trying to scoop out water, um, it could be quite tedious. And some people have used uh, cut up uh, water bottles to use as a scoop. I'm going to try something a little bit different here because I'm kind of a madman when it comes to this stuff. What I'm going to devise is I'm going to use one of these as my dirty water bag, like this one here. I have a coupler that came with a kit. And in the coupler, I went to Lowe's and bought a filter, a mesh filter. And what I wanted to do there is be able to catch a lot of the heavier duty sediment so it doesn't hit my Sawyer squeeze and I have to back flush more often. So if it's a really dirty water source, I hope that this catches most of it. So what I'll do is I'll screw this on the end of this. Now I'm going to take this 16 ounce bag 
And I am going to cut the top off of this up here and make this into one big scoop. And then what I could do is screw this onto the top like this. And then as I'm using this as a scoop, I'll just keep filling up this 64 ounce bag. Once I'm done, I could take off this coupler and then I could put it onto the Sawyer squeeze. And then I can either directly fill my water bottles, my smart water bottles, or if I choose, I can also fill up my backup bag, which I'll use for clean water if I need to carry more than two liters, if the water source happens to be further away um, and I need to carry more water. Or if I've heard that these things could ha have a tendency to break right here around the neck, if it does and it gives out, I can use this as a backup. So I've got a backup to my filtration system. I've got a way to scoop the water in. There you go. Now, one of the things I thought of is backup. What happens, one, if the water is really kind of nasty and iffy, may have some viruses in, don't know. What do we do? So you can either take the time to boil the water, let it cool, pour it into your bottles, or I went out and bought Aquamir water treatment. Now, this is not too heavy. It's uh, close to four ounces, I think. Um, and you mix it up and it will do all the work for you. It will kill all the viruses and the bacteria, etc. <clears throat> but started becoming a, a gram weenie at one point and I thought, is there anything that I could carry that's lighter? Well, start looking into aqua tabs. And if I'm worried about viruses and iffy situations, this will work. It takes longer but you just drop it in the water, weighs nothing, and it replaces about 3.7 ounces of this. Problem with this is it doesn't filter some of the, uh, I forget the, the medical name of these little critters in the water that this filter handles. If that filter breaks, uh, this won't do the job for those for those cysts, etc. So uh, I may end up going back with this. Uh, it just depends on how paranoid I am and how much backup system I want. The other thing I could do is always go back to boiling water. So that's my water system. Um, the other thing I added to this, don't know if I really need it, I added a platypus charcoal filter. And the reason for that is if I came, we came across water source, we're desperate, we have no choice, and it's full of algae and it's got that nasty taste to it, I'm going to add this on the end of the squeeze like this and just filter the water through this into my bottles. Uh, you'll notice I also have an adapter here that could go on the end and I can I can actually hook this up to the Sawyer squeeze if I want or I mean to my um, smart water bottles. So don't know if I'll actually end up using that or not but I thought it'd be a nice backup. Duh, weighs nothing. And then I have backup uh, mesh filter in case I lose one backup caps for my bladder systems uh, if I want to carry let's say that we do have a long hike and uh, water is far 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 away got to carry more than two liters maybe even more than three I can always carry these dirty water bladders with me and then as we move along and my smart water bottles uh, run out I can always squeeze the water out of these through the filter and, and replenish so that's the idea so that's my water system um, what else do we have after that? So we've talked about the water, we talked about the shelter, we talked about the sleep system, we talked about the backpack. Uh, the other one is food. So let's talk about food before we get into this other items. What I plan on bringing is over here. Now, once again, I, uh, you might as well just nickname me overkill because I do like technology and I do hear things and want a little bit of backup. I went ahead for a food bag and bought the Ursac Almighty. It's uh, what nine to ten ounces, I believe. It can hold or liters that it can hold of food, good enough for three days. And um, it's, it's supposedly made out of this heavy material. It's supposed to be bear proof. I don't know how true that is. I really didn't get it for the bear proofness necessarily, as much as mouse proof and critter proof because there's in stories where you're at shelters and etc that mice have gotten into food bags chew through it chewed into their food and kind of kind of ruined some of their food stuffs so this guy here is really thick and it is heavy to be bringing out there this thing alone is 12 ounces but you notice you open it up it's sealed with velcro 
has this inner liner made of heavy duty material. Then you got this heavy duty rope, which is supposed to be able to tie around a tree and a bear can't break loose. Who knows? I'll still hang it like a bear bag, but I want the extra protection uh, from critters. So that's what I'm going to bring. Maybe overkill. I don't care. It's a peace of mind. What am I going to bring? Well, for breakfast and dinners, I'll be eating uh, Mountain House uh, freeze-dried meals. So I've got uh, scrambled eggs for one breakfast. And let's see what else I have here. I have more scrambled eggs. So I've got two, two breakfasts. And then uh, for dinners, I've got uh, chili mac and cheese. And I've got spaghetti. So those all fit in there. And then I have to handle, so that's breakfast and dinner. And then i got to handle lunch and snacking throughout the day. So I've laid out a Ziploc bag per day. I heard this advice from Darwin, who I think heard it from somebody else, but um, I thought it was a good idea uh, to lay it out by day. Because if, let's say that you are not paying attention and you start eating like you're crazy hungry, how do you know you're not getting into the stash and starting to eat your second day or third day of food? And you get to your third day and you're low on food because you were just counting it down the first couple of days. So what I did is ration it per day. Uh, pretty. So I lay out my food per day. And since it's a three-day trip to uh, two-night overstay, uh, each day looks pretty much the same. I put in two cliff Bars for snacks in between uh breakfast and lunch and, and lunch and dinner. I've also got some dry cherries and berries for lunchtime and snacking. Uh, I've got Pop-Tarts for if I want to supplement my breakfast a little bit. I've got my coffee, instant coffee, which I did another video on. If you want to see that in my in my uh, YouTube channel, you'll see what coffee I chose. Um, I've got tuna, and what's missing in here is the tortillas, and I'll be adding those for the tuna for lunch. Uh, when I get close to uh, going on the backpacking trip. So that's what's in each three day. Uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, and again, I have them rationed out by day so I don't accidentally start uh, munching up all my food stuffs before I get to the third day and have nothing left. So that's what these three are. So that's, that's what I'm bringing for food. And now that we covered the food, the water, um, let's talk about some of the miscellaneous items. Going back over here, you'll notice that um, one thing I forgot to mention, everything I store for my water kit, I have a cube fiber bag. Weighs almost nothing that I put all the stuff in except for these rolled up bags. Everything else, squeeze, everything else goes in this bag. And another bag is my toiletries. And it also goes in a lightweight cube fiber bag. And the toiletries include toilet paper, includes some fresh wipes, includes Purell, disinfectant, includes my uh, my trowel, very lightweight, uh, made by, uh, God, I can't remember his name, I'll have to put it in the description, but he hand -makes, makes these uh, trowels out of titanium. Um, it's a cottage industry, and I think it's kind of cool. So, got that for digging my cat holes. Uh, dental floss, don't think I really need this, but just in case I really start sp smelling extra stanky on the trail. Um, got the toothbrush, clippers, which I shouldn't need unless I have uh, nail problems uh, on my toes, um, and toothpaste. And that's pretty much it for the go-to toiletry items. Now, this whole thing will probably go in the bear bag since some of these items do emit a smell, could attract bears. Uh, the other items I have, what I call preventative uh, items, would be things like duct tape in case I have to do any emergency repairs. Uh, another gel pad that I have um, in case I develop a problem with my foot. Showed you the one earlier, but uh, actually these gel pads are called Absolute Bunga Pads, 2.5 gel disc. Get two of them, ordered on uh, Walmart, work fantastic. Uh, chapstick, sun, sun lotion, just in case I need it. Some insect repellent in case it gets really crazy. Um, and gold bond. And this is kind of heavy, don't know if I need it. But just in case I get some chafing or discomfort somewhere, it's a, again, it's one of those paranoid things. 
a backup thing to carry along in case I need it. So those are some miscellaneous items I'm also bringing. What's missing out of here is Luco tape. I need to add Luco tape in here for if I start to develop uh, blisters while on the trail, I could address it before it becomes a big issue. And right now, Luco tape's in my uh, first aid bag. Other items that I'm bringing, um, oh, by the way, these items will just go in a simple Ziploc bag in the back of the backpack. The other ones that go in another Ziploc bag, miscellaneous, uh, what I call electronic items, would be my headlamp. This is the uh, the spot. Very nice uh, by Black Diamond. Got this thing on sale for 20 bucks at REI at one point. And it has a red light, has uh, dimming features, runs on a couple uh, AAA batteries. Uh, so that's what I'll be using for my lighting system. Uh, thermometer, uh, external thermometer that I could use has a very loud whistle on it. I will not be using this compass, but uh, I thought it'd be neat to know what the temperature actually were when we're out. Um, a macro lens that fits on the camera so you can take close up shots with a little clip here. Clips on over the camera on the uh, smartphone, my Note 8, and you can do close up shots without getting, uh, without having focus issues. And a uh, stick pick, which um, allows you to mount your camera on the end of your trekking pole in case you want to do those wonderful selfies as you're talking to the crowd as you're hiking. I don't know if I'll actually use it, but we'll, we'll see how that works out. Uh, backup navigation. Now, of course, I'm using, I'm going to be using gut hooks uh, application on my phone uh, to do navigation, see where we're at. But as a backup for any electronic items that could be lost, broken, dead i'm bringing a compass a sunto compass very nice compass it has all the features that you can want on a compass and um right now i'm boning up on how to navigate using a compass and one thing that's missing in here right now is a trail map which i'll get at the time we get there but it's a good backup system to have uh, even though it's we're going to a well-traveled trail the appalachian trail um you just never know it's always good to have something as a backup so that, that is my miscellaneous items there, and that all goes in a Ziploc bag. A um, couple other items that I have. Some are luxury, some are unnecessary, some are necessary. I will be bringing a buff, and I can put this around my neck to help keep some of the sun off. I can also use it as, as a cover over my mouth if there's dust or something going on, or even uh, to keep me a little bit warm, put it over the ears, the mouth, etc., and use it as a sweat rag. So it uh, multiple purposes for this. Um, if my hands get cold while trekking, I've got these light merino wool gloves by REI. Also got these on sale, very lightweight, and I'll be bringing these. Um, just a simple, light, cheap, multi-tool from Cabela. Um, I mean, this weighs almost nothing. And, you know, it has little pliers in it, knife, etc. Probably really all I really need. Luxury item. Do I really need these? No. <laughs> Again, this kind of goes with another item I probably don't really need. This, this bad boy right here. And... What this is, it's my knife, very nice six and a quarter inch blade, very sharp. I did not bring this sheath that it came with because that sheath is pretty heavy. Instead, I bought an El Cheapo from uh, Target to protect the blade and protect me and my pack. And then what I do is I just tie a, uh, a spare shoelace around it, keep this from falling off. Do I need this? Probably not. Um watching some bushwhacking videos and I thought, ah, that's kind of cool. I can go out and chop wood. I can make a campfire. Now, maybe I'll do that. Don't know. Doubt it. Um, but hey, it, it's my toy. I'm going to bring it. We'll see what happens. Now, along with that, I brought these heavy duty leather gloves. Yeah, they add over five ounces to my total weight. But then again, if I'm out there uh, chopping wood and doing stuff to make a campfire, eh, this might be good to protect my hands. Besides, I could also use it to help uh, if the gets really cold out. I could wear the liner gloves, wear them inside of these, and it will provide some warmth and some protection. So, laugh all you want, but that's that. Those are my toys, my my 
my uh, luxury items, if you will. Okay, what else am I bringing with me? Um, sort of dancing all over the place here, and I apologize for that, but a couple other preventative items. This hat, I got this hat. It's a goofy looking thing. But again, like I said, I sunburn fairly easy, and especially if we're going to be out there most of the day hiking. This, this hat will provide quite a bit of coverage for the back of my neck. It's adjustable, has a wide brim, um, and it will do the job for me. Um, it's, it's the Sunday hat, and I forget what model. Sunday afternoon is what it's called, medium size. So I'll be wearing this. It's got the drawstring so that if it's really windy, it doesn't blow off my head. So instead of just coming out with a ball cap and wearing a buff around my neck, um, I thought this would be very nice. It's very light. It's packable, folds down, and it will keep the sun off me. Um, in addition to that, I'm bringing a mosquito net, bug net. And this guy will help with mosquitoes or black flies if they're out at this time of the year and uh, keep them away from my face. Just another light, nice preventative item. Is it necessary? I don't know. It depends on how bugs and mosquitoes affect you. The other thing I'm bringing, uh, don't know if I really need these, but I wear prescription glasses, don't have contacts, and they do have the feature where they get dark when the sun comes out, but they do not get dark enough. And I had this problem last time we drove and the sun was just blaring straight into my eye as I'm trying to drive, and I just, I was blinded, and I ended up putting my wife's sunglasses over my glasses to try to help, and that helped. So instead, I got these cocoon covers. And they will go right over my prescription glasses. Yeah, I look kind of weird wearing these things. Don't care. Uh, they provide a lot of protection. So I'm going to bring these on the trail just in case I need them. Uh, but I will definitely need them for driving when we're headed into the sun and stuff. So dual purpose on these guys. And they hardly weigh anything. Uh, something that uh, I struggled on a lot was building out my first aid kit. Trust me, I, I, I had a really heavy first aid kit, and this is where I started cutting weight immediately. This is less than a pound now. It's got all the necessary items I need, including medicine like ibuprofen, um, Tylenol, um, Tums, um, diarrhea pills. It's got first aid uh, gauze and, and everything you would think you would need for an emergency situation. I'm not going to be patching up and doing surgery out there or anything, but uh, I figured it's, it's good enough doesn't add that much weight, gives me a peace of mind, and, you know, you never know when you're going to, if you could get sick, or, you know, you get some knee pains and aches, you need, need something for a little pain relief, so that's my first aid kit. I have another video that I've already covered this, this is my rain gear, it's the uh, Outdoor Research Helium uh, HD jacket, and the, uh, the rain pants, and there's another video I have that I cover this extensively where I went out and actually tested it. So that goes in the top of my pack, easily accessible um, if it starts to rain. In addition to this rain gear, I also bought the um, Osprey rain pack cover so I could cover the pack as well. Now, I will be doing a redundant system where... I'm bringing two contractor bags. My sleeping bag will be wrapped in one contractor bag. And then my clothes and anything else I don't want wet inside the main compartment of the bag will also be in a, in a trash compactor bag. And what that looks like, it's right here. You can see I've lined the interior. And then I can put everything in and then I can cinch this down and that will keep things dry. So a little bit of redundancy. Let's talk about a couple other, yeah, luxury items, maybe. Yeah, they are. Chair. Everybody says you don't need a chair, right? Um, it's unnecessary weight. Just sit on the ground and use one of these. A butt pad. So I'm bringing a butt pad as well. Uh, the Thermarest is Z-Seat. Um, I figure I could use it to kneel on if the ground is wet. I could use it to place things on as I'm setting up camp. I could use it to sit on, as well as I decided, you know what? Somebody, a lot of people say these things are nice. If you want to carry the weight, they're nice if you're sitting around camp for a long time, and I think we will be. So I'm going to bring this and see how it works out for me. And this is one of those luxury items. I was saying if I wanted to get down to being a 
quote unquote top of the scale <laughs> lightweight backpacker with the base weight this would be one of the first things that would have to go but it is only a little over a pound with with the uh, sack the other things I'm bringing is I do not have the luxury of being able to use trail runners I have to use boots because of my ankles and the tendency to twist my ankles so I need something for camp shoes if originally I was going to bring my Crocs but they seem to bulky and heavy so I found these that another hiker said he lives by and they're called a leader shoes and they're very lightweight um, knocked off quite a few pounds off the Crocs and they pack down nice I mean I could fold them up they go down small um, and also I just put El Cheapo uh, connectors to them and on my pack itself I just bought a strap that I wound around the top and they just hang off this strap and that's it I just hang them on the outside and I'll use those as camp shoes. The other thing I'm going to use them for is if, hey, if we, if I ever go hiking and I have uh, water crossings, I don't want to get use my boots uh, necessarily, even though they're quote unquote waterproof. Hey, I could just put these on and go traipsing through the water. No problem. They dry out. They're thin. I could cinch them down. I don't have to worry about rushing water, knocking them off my feet because um, they're Velcro straps. So very nice. I think these will work out pretty, pretty well. And I can put on heavy socks and uh, trips around the camp with them. Speaking of that, I came, somebody had a suggestion. I, I've been struggling with what happens if your gloves get wet? What happens if you're in camp and you're wearing these things and it's raining or it's soggy and wet out? Somebody suggested, I thought it was a great idea, just baggies. So I got these bags from uh, my newspaper delivery. And all I'm going to do is for gloves, if I have to, if it's raining, I'll just put them in on over my hand and glove. I'll keep the rain off. And I'll do the same thing if I'm in camp and I want to wear socks because it's cold out, but it's also wet. I'll just wrap this thing around, put on my sock, wrap it around my foot, put it in here, presto. And it should work. I thought it was a genius idea, so I'm going to bring that. Um, something I didn't mention in the, in the food variety is this. I'm bringing uh, noon strawberry lemonade uh, hydration. They're just tablets, uh, and they provide the similar value that like Gatorade does. It replenishes your electrolytes. And I thought it would be good if, you know, let's say I, for whatever reason, I'm not uh, getting the salt intake I need, although I severely doubt that based on the salt content of these things. But just in case I need it or I'm running low on energy, I'll throw this in. Or I'm t sick and tired of just drinking the water. I need something just a little sweet. I'm bringing these along. I can throw them into the smart bottle, shake it up. It dissolves in no time and have myself uh, some vitamins and some electrolytes. So I'm bringing that with me as well. Okay, so what haven't I talked about? Well, this bag of items, really not much to it. I got my paracord for hanging my bear bag. I've got my anchor, 10,000 backup battery. And I'll use, I don't know if I'm going to need this, but when I bring my smartphone, I'm going to be turning off everything except for GPS, of course. Uh, for being able to do the gut hooks application, know where I'm at. Um, but in case I do turn it back on to get cell service, if we have it and use it and start to run down the battery, I've got this as a backup I can recharge, and it should be no problem to last through three days. It should be pretty straightforward. Um, the other thing that I have in here is a backup for fire. Um, for my cook system, I have a striker. And... Uh, do I really need it? No. Again, it's just that paranoid factor that I have a backup for the lighters I'm bringing for my cook system. So that's what's in that bag. And then, what do you do for clothes? So, I am bringing, besides what I'm wearing, it gets cold at night, need something extra, or during the day, I've got this nice Ghost Whisper Mountain Hardware, Mountain Hardware, puffy jacket. So I'm bringing that. It packs down to nothing, weighs nothing. So I have that as extra liner. 
I'm also bringing a fleece jacket, fairly lightweight. It's a light fleece jacket by Marmot. And again, I could wear this during the hiking day if it gets really cold out, strip it down. I can also wear it as an extra liner in my sleep system if it gets down really cold and I need some extra comfort. The other things I'm bringing as backup, sleep socks, keep my feet warm, and a backup pair of hiking socks, the thick ones, smart wool, in case during the day my other socks get really drenched, either from sweat or rain or whatever. I've got these to put on the next day, hoping for the first pair to dry out. So it's a backup. There's, I hear there's nothing worse than having to put on a wet pair of socks and go back out hiking again. So that's what that's for. pair of shorts I could wear around camp and go to sleep in because I don't want to sleep in my hiking pants in case they get muddy, dirty, wet. And to go with that, I've got my Nike Pro very thin thermal tights. So these will wear either hiking underneath my hiking pants or at night in the sleeping bag if I need an extra layer of warmth. Packs down fairly small. If I get cold, I mean it's blistery cold, I've got my biking baklava, full face coverage. I could put it up over my mouth and, and ears and the only thing showing through is my face. Or I could use it at night to cover up my head if, if I get cold. If you remember, my, t my sleeping bag does not have a hood on it. So I could use this to cover up my head at night and keep me warm if needed. Back up pair of underwear, very light, just like I'm going to be wearing on the trail. Back up Columbia hiking shirt in case the other one gets totally gnarly, wet, disgusting, smelly, etc. And I can also wear this as another layer in my sleeping bag so I'm not having to sleep in what I hiked in. So again, these are items that add a little bit of weight, but it's that extra comfort. Uh... Just a random terry cloth towel, very light, in case the inside of the tent gets wet and I have to wipe it down or wipe down any other piece of uh, gear. I can use this, uh, wipe my face, etc. And in addition to the buff, this should be enough. Um, something that everybody says is a waste. You don't need to bring, but I'm bringing it anyways. Camp soap. Don't know if I'll ever use it. Doesn't add that much weight. Uh, but just in case, eh, I don't know. I throw it in just for, just for grins. So I think I covered everything that's got to go back in my bag in an orderly fashion versus how I pulled it out, except for one item I forgot to mention, which is the cook kit. Okay, cook kit I decided to go with. Instead of going with the traditional canister stove, I decided to go alcohol. And I decided to go, again, overkill. Yeah, probably. I went with the Titanium uh, Avenue Pot, and then I went with the Trail Designs Caldera Side Tri System. So what does all that mean? Fancy terms. Basically, I'm going to bring close to 10 ounces of fuel, alcohol, and it doesn't take a lot to get water boiling with the alcohol. It takes very little, and I'll show you why. Oh, by the way, this is the lid to my co uh, double-walled coffee mug. Here's my titanium spork. Very small, light, agile. I put it in this bag again because if it has food smells on it, this will probably go in my bear kit uh, for hanging at night. So here's, here's the pot. I got the pot. It's 1.3 liters. It's bigger because when me and the wife go camping, we need to have something big enough to boil the water for hot cocoa, coffee, and dehydrate the meals. So if I open this up, it's titanium, very light. Here's my alcohol stove. Very simple. Just drop your alcohol in here. And then we've got the caldera system for burning the stove. And I've got my lighter and some nefarious other items. I'm not going to go into detail about how to set this up, but basically... There's titanium shield that goes around the stove, 
and then the pot sits right on top of it, totally enclosed. So all the heat is directed straight up into the bottom of the pot. None of the heat escapes, and it heats up the water really fast. I was able to boil water in less than eight minutes and have it ready to go for my dehydrated meal when I tested it. The other thing you could use this for is Espit kit. You can use Espit tablets to boil water. And third, there's another insert in here for actually burning wood. So you could set this up, remove the alcohol stove, put wood in here, set it up, and it concentrates the wood fire to direct all the heat here, and it breathes very well. It also dealt the 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 system also doubles as a screen so if you're in high wind situations you don't have to worry about blowing out the blowing out the uh gas you don't have to worry about blowing out the woods or sending numbers all over the place it's a really really neat system i i suggest if you're interested in, take a look at the uh, uh, trail designs uh caldera side try system and take a look at it. it's pretty cool stuff so i'm looking forward to using this it all fits back into this pot fairly easy not a, not an issue and forget what it, there's the lighter oh this is a overkill lighter too this is a uh like a jet lighter see how it comes out so then i can easily light that and it's run on butane refillable also i have a backup lighter in my uh my first aid kit and as i told you i also have the striker that i could use as well if need be so that's my cook system. I'll be mainly boiling water only uh, to make uh, coffee and dehydrate the meals. And that's it. There's nothing fancy here like trying to make eggs or bacon or cook up uh, spam or anything of that nature. Uh, I figure for three days I could live on the dehydrated meals and not have an issue. Um, so that's it. That's my entire system. 36 plus glorious pounds of backpacking load. Um, I think I've probably got more than I probably need for three days. You just never know how the weather is going to turn. But I feel comfortable with this. And as I said, I've been working out uh, quite a bit, trying to get uh, in better shape to carry the load. I feel good. Um, one thing I will mention about working out, I originally went on the treadmill, which is right up here. And I, I started cranking out four miles an hour, trying to crank it up so I get my cardio up. Felt pretty good. And I thought, okay, enough of the play. Once we're done with that, let's put on all the gear, including the hike boots, and let's go out and do it for real. And I'll tell you one thing. There's a big difference between treadmill versus walking for real. And the top front of my thighs were killing me after going out that first day. This is after a month of being on the treadmill. And it's because the treadmill is, gives you a mechanical advantage pushing you forward. All you got to do be is smart enough to lift your feet and keep from getting drilled off the back of the uh, treadmill. Whereas when you're out on the trail, you're propelling yourself and all that weight. So it really works your muscles differently. So don't just rely on treadmills to get you in shape. Get out there and get hiking. And I think they're, they're right. If you want to get in shape, the best way to get in shape is to actually do it. Whether it's in your local neighborhood or local trails, that's, to me, it's, it's the best way to get in shape. So thank you for listening to this long rambling and my, my disastrous area of uh, stuff. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, it should be an exciting trip. And it'll be interesting to see what I actually used, and I found that I didn't need it all, and further tune my, uh, my backpack. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.